Pokemon Scarlet and Violet is just around the corner, and one of the ways they celebrated this game was by releasing a brand new, very shiny looking Nintendo Switch OLED Special Edition, uh, which I did a full unboxing of. If you haven't checked that out, make sure to watch that video as well. One of the things that's really cool about this release is that we are now at a total of four different Special Edition Nintendo Switches, which I just so happen to have over time collected. <laughs> Look, I think it's pretty obvious which of these is the most beautiful, right? Right? So I just want to go over these four different designs, how Switch Special Editions have evolved with time, uh, and where I'm hoping to see they go next. So real quick, brief overview of what four systems we all have here. On my left is the very first Special Edition they did that was Pokemon related, which is the Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee Special Edition Switch. This was a launch model one, not a red box, so it does have the weaker battery life. In front of that, we have a Switch Lite that was released for Pokemon Sword and Shield. On my right side, we have another Switch Lite, which was done for Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. And lastly, our most most recent edition, the Scarlet and Violet Switch OLED. So let's take a deep look at what's going on with each of these switches, starting with the Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. Now again, this was one of the first special editions they made. Not the very first, there were a couple that came before it, but this really comes from the era of Nintendo Switch special editions where I wasn't that happy with them. Uh, you know, this is coming right after when they had a lot of special edition 2DS and 3DSs that were really wild, cool looking designs. While the Switch by comparison, there's just not a lot, a lot going on here. Uh, so first off, celebrating the fact that it is Pikachu and Eevee, we have a Pikachu Joy-Con and an Eevee Joy-Con. One of my favorite little details with this one is the fact that the wrist strap attachments for them add a secondary color, which is also based on colors from those Pokemon. So the Pikachu one, for instance, has a brown color that's similar to the brown marks on Pikachu's back, uh, while the Eevee one had kind of a light white cream color that matches the tip of Eevee's tail and that kind of throat fluff that he has. So I thought that was a really nice little attention to detail, probably one of my favorite parts about this system. On the back is where I ended up having a little more problems. This is a tactic they used for a lot of special editions back in the day, where instead of actually having like a super clear, bright design, it's relying on a mixture of gloss and matte finish to have this print going on. The print itself is pretty simple. You've got some Pokeballs, you've got some Pikachus, some Eevees and different stances all typed throughout. All the patterns have been repeated a couple times. This is actually very similar to what we saw most recently on the Scarlet and Violet one, just lacking color. You know, if they did something like this where the Pokeballs were their actual, you know, red and white colors, and then we got Pikachu and Eevee in some kind of brown or yellow, I think that it could have popped a lot more. Uh, but as is, it's just a little on the simple side. Now, being a regular Switch, this did of course come with a Switch dock, which also features a design on it. Uh, this was again, kind of a simple one, although it was definitely better than than some of the other Switch docks they had done at the time, uh, where it's still using that black body, but you have Pikachu in yellow and Eevee in brown, matching the same sides that the Joy-Cons are on. It's not the worst special edition Switch Nintendo's made, and in fact, I think when this one came out, I actually uh, applauded it as being the best one so far. And it really shows, I think, where they've developed and grown since, because we're gonna see a lot more color with these later models. And where this is really evident is with the Sword and Shield Switch Lite. Uh, overall, I actually really like what Nintendo has done with the Switch Lite Special Editions. I think because it's a clear unibody design, they're more willing to do a little more customization on them. Because this one immediately, you can tell that there's a additional pop of color and more differentiation going on than what we saw with the Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. I think the best accent is of course the fact that you are getting the left and right sides where instead of doing the Joy-Cons like they did in Let's Go and Eevee, we have it for the buttons and the d-pads and the sticks which looks awesome real big fan of how these look on a gray body that i think adds a nice little contrast and it's not like a bright stark white or a super dark black you just go for that midpoint and then you have on the back a little bit more simplified with an etching of zacian and zamazenta i think that's how you say their names it's been a little bit since i thought about sword and shield i do wish that there was a little more color going on in the back here kind of like what they did with the buttons on the front uh but still it's a really good balance i think of being something that showcases stuff from the game uh while being a nice looking special edition uh this is really actually one of my favorites overall that Nintendo has done. I think the way that the two colors to the front pop out really nicely is just a great look. Now for the Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl Special Edition, they actually toned it back a little bit, but for a very good reason. He'll chill there, it's fine. So this one's a little simpler in a lot of ways, but it's for a really cool reason. So if you're paying attention to Pokemon back in Gen 4 when the original Diamond Pearl were released, they released a special edition DS that was basically this exact same concept. It was this kind of shinier dark gray with a gold and silver etching of the legendaries from that game, Dialga and Palkia. Uh, and so this being like a throwback to that design gives it some 
extra cool points. Like in a void, just looking at this compared to the Sword and Shield, I do like the colors on the Sword and Shield more, although the, the very metallic finish on the body does look really, really nice. But again, because it is playing all that nostalgia factor and it's this kind of throwback concept and it almost feels like a celebration of this, you know, previously released game, uh, really liked that approach to this Switch. Not as big of a fan of the game itself, if I'm being honest. Uh, I loved Platinum back in the day and I really wish that some more of those mechanics got mixed into Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, but that's what we ended up getting, and it was fine. And then we have the most recently released Scarlet and Violet Edition Switch, and this one is way busier than all the other ones we've looked at so far, which I'm really happy about because I think it shows a clear sign of growth from, you know, what Nintendo has done in the past with Special Editions and how they're trying to get a little more complex and interesting with these designs. Similar to the Pikachu and Eevee one, we've got a pair of Joy-Cons that are two different colors reflecting something from the game, a Violet Joy-Con that ties into Pokemon Violet, and a orange Joy-Con that ties into Pokemon Scarlet for whatever reason. Uh, but there's a lot more going on because with the Let's Go ones, you just had the color and that was it. Sure, there was the cool little tie-in with how the wrist straps worked, but ultimately it's just a solid color. Uh, whereas these ones, they have things going on both the front and back. Not only the color design, but you get the little school logo at the bottom, which is a nice touch, and some print designs of some Pokemon on the back of the Joy-Cons, which actually plays into the overall design of the back itself, where you just have all these prints going on. Now, again, this is kind of a similar idea to what Let's Go did, but the print is much more busy with a lot more going on. Instead of repeating certain images over and over again, you have multiple different images of all the different starters, of different things from the game. They're using two different colors, so it's actually playing on that black background instead of being that gloss versus matte thing going on. And while this wasn't a huge deal on the Let's Go one, one of the problems that I've had with a lot of regular Switch Special Editions is the way the kickstand is incorporated and that it isn't. It's usually just a simple black design that interrupts the rest of the back. Whereas with the OLEDs, because of the way the kickstand works, it's now just one big design continuously, uh, which yeah, it gets a little interrupted a bit here and there, but I definitely prefer that over just simply having a plain black kickstand and then print everywhere else. And what really makes this one complete is a dock design that is actually, again, very similar to what they did with Let's Go, but I think the colors end up working out a lot better. Uh, you know, whereas the Let's Go one just had the same matte finish across, and then you've got Pikachu and Eevee in their respective colors. With the Scarlet design, you're actually seeing this kind of gloss finish that was applied to the front of the OLED dock. And then you have that orange and violet designs for Coridon and Miraidon, which clashes with the white so much better. It is such a clean, beautiful look, especially because that gloss gives just an extra little sense of smoothness to it. Uh, I'll be real, actually a lot of times I'm not super big into gloss on systems. Uh, I tend to prefer matte finishes, but I think Switch docks specifically, when it's just that front panel, uh, really nice time to use it. Also, this is a really minor thing, but one of the things I didn't realize about it until I opened it uh, was I love this little Pokeball thing they use for the cutout. I just thought it was a fun, smart little idea. I like little details like that. Uh, speaking of little details, uh, it is a little incorrect to say that this is just the same as Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee because there is also a kind of border design going around the legendaries as well. It's a little more subtle. You can't really see it super clearly from a distance, but it does give it this nice little complete look up close. The biggest takeaway I have from looking over all these is that again, Nintendo is getting better with their special editions. You know, I don't exactly know if that was the logic all along to start with simpler designs and then make them nicer and nicer so people are more tempted to upgrade again and again. But even just comparing immediately, you know, the oldest of these to the newest, especially because they're both dock-based designs, just there's a lot more color. I feel like the general approach in detail and design is just a lot more interesting. Even when you compare those print patterns, right? Again, the Pikachu and Eevee one relied on using the same prints over and over again to just create a patterning look, uh, whereas this has a lot more different images all stamped together going on, which is a lot more engaging and interesting looking. I definitely still think there is some additional room for improvement. Uh, the biggest thing I'm really surprised we have not seen from Nintendo yet for a special edition Switch is just something that messes with the dock design a little bit more. I'm sure from a development and production standpoint, it just makes a lot more sense to use a traditional dock design and make it prettier in some way, which is cool. I get it, I appreciate it, but I would love if just before the Switch life cycles end, or, you know, if we get another Switch design in the future as a next-gen system, then we get special editions for that one. I would love for them to just get crazier with the dock. There are so many cool dock designs you can find online that people have done, and I realize there's hesitation in ordering stuff like that because the history of the Nintendo Switch and using third-party docks for power sources, but just the kind of interesting, unique things that other people have come up with, and I feel like Nintendo has the easiest opportunity to do it better than a lot of other people out there. 
I mean, just imagine a Switch dock that is a Pokeball shape for Pokemon, or even for some of the other franchises where you could get a Hylian shield shaped dock for Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Special edition Switches have absolutely gotten better, but there's just that next tier that I'm waiting to see happen.